The Texas high-speed rail between Dallas and Houston has been discussed for over a decade, yet the project is still billions of dollars over budget and has constantly been delayed. So what went wrong? A decade ago, the Texas Central Railway revealed its intention to construct a high-speed rail route from Dallas to Houston. With an early cost estimate of roughly $10 billion, the project was hailed as one of the greatest things to happen to Texas. And at first glance, you'd think this project would be nothing but a super successful initiative for the Lone Star State. Yet Texas Central has failed to break ground on the high-speed rail line many years after it was due to open. And the project has been embroiled in controversy as construction costs balloon above $30 billion. These challenges have left many wondering if the Dallas-Houston high-speed train line will ever come to pass. In this video, we will investigate the Texas High-Speed Rail project to understand what exactly happened. But before we continue, be sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and hit the notification bell so you can be the first to learn more about multi-billion dollar megaprojects from the United States and around the world. The prospect of an American high-speed rail line piqued the interest of both Texans and National Railway aficionados. So much so that during Obama's presidency, then-Vice President Joe Biden told a Dallas audience that the high-speed rail would be completed soon, ushering the country into a new age of transportation. The announcement was met with much fanfare, and many believed the project would be finished in a few years. It was hoped that the high-speed rail line would be the first step in establishing a high-speed rail network in Texas and, eventually, the rest of the United States. As the first bullet train network in North America, a lot was riding on the project's success. Texas Central's bullet train would run 65 or more trains each day from Dallas to Houston and back. Between the two cities, the project would require 1,200 hectares of land. According to preliminary estimates, the train connection would serve the 13 million Texans who travel between the two cities by vehicle or air. The two-city track was created to be similar to those seen in Tokyo and Osaka, since Dallas and Houston are far enough apart for this high-speed rail to be feasible. Traveling from Houston to Dallas currently takes more than four hours due to traffic congestion, and the Texas Department of Transportation projects that by 2040, travel time would peak at six hours. Environmentally, the high-speed rail route between Dallas and Houston will remove as many as 14,600 mobile cars per day. Such an enterprise will result in a significant reduction in CO2 emissions each year, which is always desirable for environmental sustainability. The Dallas-Houston High-Speed Rail project is 380 kilometers long, with proponents claiming it would deliver travelers to their destination in 90 minutes. Texas Central anticipates that the rail line will serve as a model for the Federal Railroad Administration in popularizing the use of lightweight trains and freestanding infrastructure across the United States. In many ways, the Dallas-Houston train route was intended to be a test for the country's high-speed rail system. It was hoped to demonstrate to private finance markets that high-speed rail might be desirable in America because of the trains renowned for speed, dependability, and efficiency. Dallas and Houston have among the greatest population growth rates in the United States. Texas Central anticipated that the number of commuters utilizing the Dallas-Houston high-speed rail would increase from 6 million in 2029 to 13 million in 2050. In June 2017, it was announced that construction would begin in 2019 and would support 10,000 construction jobs per year, as well as 1,500 permanent employees once operations began. Texas Central revealed that the global engineering and construction company Bechtel will handle the project for bullet train developer Texas Central. The business received a $300 million loan for permits, design, and engineering on September 13, 2018. Texas Central started its serious attempts to buy land along the rail line's path in the summer of 2016, contacting property owners and submitting papers to maintain the options to purchase hectares in the 10 countries the rail line would pass. 
During the land acquisition process, Texas Central faced significant resistance from landowners whose land would be necessary to construct the train line. The major question was whether Texas Central could seize the properties via eminent domain, which refers to the power the government has to take private property and convert it into public use. Texas Central said it would use eminent domain powers in order to compel the acquisition of property for public use even if the proprietor refused to sell, but stated they would only employ eminent domain as a last option. While Texas Central has issued a diagram of the line's path, it has yet to reveal how many property acquisitions would be required to complete the project. Texas Central has failed to establish itself in Texas as a railroad business with eminent domain jurisdiction. This means that the amount of land required for the project is still surprisingly unknown. To date, Texas Central has filed 38 lawsuits against landowners who have refused to grant the firm's access to their property for land surveys, and more than 90 landowners with properties along the route between Dallas and Houston have hired lawyers to fight Texas Central. The rural towns that will be on or near the potential railway line has also been less than enthusiastic about the high-speed rail. Many have raised worry about the noise caused by trains passing through their sleepy communities hundreds of times every day. Locals are also concerned that once completed, the railroad lines would split farmlands and diminish property values. To make matters worse, Texas Central Railway's costs have risen significantly since the project's inception, from $10 billion to $30 billion in 2020. This 200% cost rise heavily exceeds the period's 13% inflation rate. According to a recent Hoover Institution study, the project's expenditures are currently about $200 million per kilometer. California's high-speed rail project, much like Texas Central, has also seen its planned costs rise from $45 billion in 2008 to as much as $120 billion in 2022, an almost 170% increase. There is, however, a significant distinction between the high-speed rail projects in California and Texas. The state of California will bear a large portion of the increased rail expenditures. In Texas, the law prohibited governmental support for high-speed rail, which means Texas Central would have to raise its own finances for the project. And if you think these are the only issues facing Texas Central since proposing the project, you're in for a surprise, so stay until the end of the video to find out the real reason why it's almost impossible for the project to go ahead. Despite the initial fanfare and proposed advantages of the rail project, ever since it had encountered significant barriers, the project fell into hibernation. As the battle between Texas Central and landowners heated up, some state lawmakers started to believe that a high-speed rail network was unnecessary and worked hard to derail the project. But the biggest setback of the project was the resignation of Texas Central CEO and President Carlos Aguila. Aguila left the firm because he was unable to resolve all of the challenges that the high-speed rail encountered. And honestly, if the CEO of the train line's development business does not believe in the idea, then who will? His resignation after running the project for six years left a massive hole that has yet to be filled. Interestingly enough, despite Texas Central's delays and disruptions, 2022 was actually a surprisingly positive year for the high-speed rail project. On June the 24th, 2022, the Texas Supreme Court issued a decision recognizing that Texas Central had the ability to purchase property via eminent domain since they qualified as an interurban electric railway corporation. The case's decision is a ray of sunshine in the midst of the storm that is the Dallas-Houston high-speed rail network. So what do you think about the Texas high-speed rail? Let us know your thoughts about this project in the comments down below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and give this video a like. See you in the next one.